comes to cannabis, right now we are facing just one of the worst human rights violations in America in so, so long. There is this young group of workers that are being subjected to the most unsafe working conditions imaginable in some of these indoor warehouses without the right light protection, ear protection, being exposed to dangerous pesticides, being forced to trim dangerous, contaminated, moldy, mildew-covered weed, being in environments without proper airflow, with way too much carbon dioxide <laughs> penetration, saturation, and no one really gives a damn. OSHA came into New Mexico when some two people almost blew up, well, they did blow up a large-scale hydrocarbon extraction lab, but when it comes to hydrocarbon extractions and flammable volatile solvents, normal industries would be regulated and have class 1A explosive-proof rooms and spark-proof rooms and shoes, just like in a kitchen that are going to be non-slip shoes. So many of these warehouses don't have drains. Like, they use squeegees and mops sometimes. They don't water their plants enough because they don't want to have to deal with the runoff and don't know what to do with it. So when their plants are having a problem where there's too much salinity build up in their media, so major problems there. But they're not being given the right protective equipment, training to know what they're doing, uh, or even understand the risks of being in their industry from a respiratory standpoint and others. I know three people that have lost an eye to the cannabis industry to bamboo stakes um, from just not labeling them correctly, putting them into pots, leaning into them. There has to be a standardized way to do this. This doesn't happen in traditional agriculture. And it's only happening because this plant's federally illegal. So I see all these worker injustices. I see all these people that are working 10, 12, 14, hour, hour, 14 an hour jobs being subjected to really dangerous conditions just to make a dollar. And it's cool because they're selling weed or they're growing weed and they moved out to Colorado or they're in LA in this warehouse and it's it's a cool thing to be doing at this stage because it's so novel. But without following the precautionary principle in this industry, we legalize this without, especially in Colorado, not having the right standards. The lack of these standards then allowed massive proliferation of a gold rush where there was all this investment capital, time and energy spent to form all these companies, design all these retrofit buildings, build all these buildings, not have no slip going into like on stairs, not having wet floor signs, not having eyewash protections near nutrient stations where you have acids and bases. And people are mixing them in tens of thousands of gallon batches and splash back. This would never be allowed in any other industry. Defibri like First aid kits, nothing is required in basic standards. Some of the health and safety violations as well. For Do they ever do fire drills in these large scale industrial operations? Do they have enough fire alarms, smoke alarms, smoke detectors? Do they have these things there? Initially to get certificate of occupancy, yes. Do they move them? Do they know how to use them? Are they up to date? Who's going back around to certify? Are these buildings being required to have fire suppression or not? Are the solvents required to be stored in safe containers? CO2 canisters? For the love of all things holy. I've seen these things moved around giant CO2 containers. Now there's great services that have a tank outside and come with a truck and fill it. But workers still, today, are moving with dollies, all these CO2 canisters around, setting them up against the wall without having chaining and required safety standards. One of these things falls down, you've got a torpedo. Like just a straight up missile going through concrete walls. <laughs> and no one thinks about it. They're all looking at the money, the states see the tax revenue, and here we have a lot of workers, our brothers and sisters in the industry, on the front lines producing these plants, selling these plants, being robbed and held up at dispensaries that didn't have security because they didn't see the need for the cost, put at risk. And there's a way that we can make a profit. There's a way we can make a safe industry. There's a way we can do all of this, and we have that guidance from other industries. Granted, robberies can happen, slips can happen, but we have to plan this better. The worker protective people in this industry, the standards people, they can't help us. So we have to look to better standards. I really, really push Americans for Safe Access with patient-focused certification as a nonprofit standards group that's standing up to say, just because the federal government can't do this, we're going to step up and do it as a private organization to help as many people as possible. Because this industry's here. It's here to stay. But without workers doing it, you're not going to see robots growing weed for any time soon. We don't have robots necessarily growing corn, but we do have GPS-driven combines. 
the large scale industrialization of cannabis is happening and will continue to happen. And if you don't plan for it in the industry, you're going to get rolled over by a steamroller. And if you keep doing what you're doing in these other ways, you're going to have a worker sue you. You're going to have a worker quit. You're going to have a worker call OSHA. You're going to feel bad because in five years when you maybe have six workers with a certain sort of cancer from some pesticide that they breathe in every day for two years while following their dreams and growing weed, you're going to feel pretty bad about that. And it's also going to hurt your pocketbook when they sue you for knowingly allowing something like this to happen. So do your homework. Don't poison your workers. Don't poison your consumers. Provide safe working environments with shifts and adequate bathroom facilities and cleanliness. Hold your workers to a better standard and provide them higher standard equipment and training and you'll have a company that stays around for a long time. We're in the industry of growing money on trees and it does grow on trees. We've seen that and then we extract it and started an entire industry from this. From this wonderful, wonderful plant. But without the people to have this, we would have no industry. So long-term longevity, take care of your people, take care of this plant, and they'll end up taking care of you.